A common insecurity we all have as developers is questioning whether or not we have enough of the right skills or if we're falling behind. And I think whether you're brand new to data engineering or someone who's got a lot of experience, there's always something new to learn. In today's video, I wanna break down some of the specific skills to know as a data engineer so that you can identify what you need to learn maybe to land that first job or some things to take that next step in your career. And if you're someone who's maybe trying to wrap your head around this whole modern stack and try to figure out what it actually looks like, I've put together a new PDF. I'm calling it the starter guide for the modern data stack. It's gonna give you a nice overview of how modern data pipelines typically look, along with some of the specific tools and languages kind of all in one picture. It's completely free and I'll add a link below so you can grab yourself a copy. And with that said, let's now get into breaking down the skills. Every company will have different names, but we're gonna start with what I'm going to call the junior engineer. I'm considering this to be somebody who has finally landed that first data engineering or maybe analyst position and is one of the newer members of the data team. So if you're a student or maybe somebody looking to make a career change, this is probably the type of role you'd most likely start off in. From a purely development perspective, the first and most important skill you'll need to know is without a doubt, SQL. It's been around forever, but it's still very much used in the day-to-day -day of any data engineer. One of your main tasks will be creating data transformations, and the most common way to do that is through SQL. Python is another language that comes up a lot, and of course, some companies may require it, but in my opinion and in my experience, I wouldn't expect a junior engineer to be some sort of Python wizard. Now, one thing that's important to remember here is that not every data engineering position is going to be with Google or Meta or some super advanced tech company. There are many other companies, big and small, that are nowhere near the tech stack of those companies, but they still need really skilled data engineers. Next is having a baseline understanding of the different data and file types that you'll work with. So for example, here I'm talking about being familiar with JSON versus XML versus YAML files, kind of understand what they look like, their common use cases, and how to extract information from them. If you're trying to learn Snowflake as a, as a database, take some time to understand the variant data type. It's very closely related to this stuff. There's also going to be commonly used database data types that you should know. And so for this, I'm talking about things like integers, strings, booleans, et cetera, and kind of how they're used typically. Last in this development section, you should also be able to create useful data visualizations. To me, it is a skill in itself to take data and turn it into something useful for other end users to interact with. I think as you get more senior as an engineer, you may get a little bit further away from the visual aspects of these kind of things. But as a junior, you can expect to be assigned some of this work. Next, I want to focus on the workflow portion of the job as a junior engineer. Most tools nowadays are either code-based or have some sort of Git integration built in. And that means you're gonna spend a lot of your time working in a version control platform like GitHub or GitLab. And to be most effective there, you should have a good understanding of how the underlying Git architecture works and the benefits of version control in general. The main job requirements of a data engineer is to help data move from point A to point B. And the two primary ways of doing that are either through ETL or ELT approaches. A more modern stack will use that ELT approach, but again, that doesn't mean that all companies are going to do that today. You should begin with a basic working knowledge of the high level components within these approaches and how the pieces fit together. Adding on to the ELT and ETL concepts, you should get to understand the different objects within a database and at a high level, the different ways that they're designed, these databases. So for example, uh, data modeling techniques like dimensional modeling, star schema, third normal form concepts like this, and overall designs like columnar versus row-based databases. And all this, it's a lot, you know, you'll learn more about this as your career progresses, but as a junior engineer, it is important to be aware of these different database types and how they fit into the bigger picture. The last portion we'll talk about is the skills for working within a data team. And this is especially important if you're making a career change and may not have any idea what to expect in your day-to-day -day life as a developer. Most development teams nowadays work using the agile development approach. Essentially, all that means is you'll have new development cycles every few weeks and go through various team ceremonies for each one. So having a familiarity with this process will definitely help you start contributing 
as a developer right away because you're not going to feel lost in what's going on. A common way newer engineers learn the ropes is through troubleshooting. You'll often be tasked most likely with digging into a bug fix or adding a small code update here and there. It's almost like a rite of passage, I'd say, but it's also really a great way to learn on the job and will help you build up your skills to start building more complex data pipelines on your own a little bit further down the line. And last is more of a personal skill, which is that of patience. As I said from the start, there is always something new to learn in data engineering, but you also can't expect to learn it all overnight. It will be frustrating and you'll have times when you feel completely overwhelmed. I know I certainly did, but the best junior engineers are coachable. They're willing to try new tools and they will never stop learning. Let's now shift the focus to the next level, which is what we'll call the senior engineer. So this is somebody that has a few more years or more experience under their belt. They've mastered the fundamentals and they're now more involved in the advanced projects. From a development perspective, a senior engineer needs to be skilled in various enterprise data modeling concepts, but not only in theory, but also be able to implement it. Depending on the tech stack and specific company, they may also need to have the skills in the area of data streaming or change data capture if that's the type of architecture that they need. They should be comfortable working with general programming languages like Python or Bash or maybe C Sharp if you're on a full Microsoft stack. But again, don't have to be an expert necessarily in all of them, but have a working knowledge. They'd also be expected to be able to pick up multiple platforms as needed because their fundamentals are already solid. And so for this, I'm talking about hobby between, let's say, cloud platforms or maybe between different ELT tools or databases. And ultimately, like I keep saying, they don't need to be a pro at everything that's really like impossible, but they do need to be experienced enough to be able to pick up new tools fairly quickly. Now onto the workflow section for a senior engineer. At this experience level, the expectation is you'd be familiar with CICD and automation concepts and be able to create your own workflows. You'd also be expected to be comfortable working on various infrastructure concepts. And for this, I'm talking about things like managing a database server or working with containers. If you, if your company happens to use them, you'd also throw in maybe some basic networking here. Lastly for workflows is integrations because so much of data engineering revolves around connecting different tools together. And therefore the more senior you get, the more involved you'll get with this whole process. This could be something as simple as connecting a CRM to another database, but could be as complex as, you know, automated change data capture or real-time streaming between applications. Honestly, all three of these concepts here kind of play off each other, which I think speaks to the type of knowledge you need to have uh, as a senior contributor. A senior engineer on a development team now also has more clout and would be expected to be way more vocal in team meetings. So that means speaking up to offer opinions, uh, offering technical solutions, and overall just kind of being more of a go-to resource. This concept blends over into the development responsibilities as well. A senior engineer would be expected to be comfortable with production deployments and be skilled enough to take on more complex development assignments for the team. Finally, this person should be willing to give back to the rest of the team in the form of mentorship and guidance. A team is really only as fast as its slowest part and a great senior engineer will help lift those around them and in general is just there to assist the more junior developers. The third and final one we'll cover is the lead or staff. Again, this could have a variety of names, but this person is the most experienced technical person on the team and may even double as a manager depending on the structure of your company. In terms of development, this person is similar to the senior, but overall just more experienced and advanced in certain areas. This also means they'll be taking on the most complex assignments and likely completely focused on one or two big picture projects at a time, rather than maybe one-off individual tasks. These projects will likely have a wide reaching impact and play a big role in the path that the rest of the team and possibly the whole company follows. As the most senior and experienced person, they'll also be responsible for communicating and implementing best practices. Maybe more importantly, they would be expected to speak up and kind of course correct if things start to go off track with the rest of the team. From a workflow perspective, they must be able to optimize any existing technologies being used or be able to implement new ones to replace them. 
So that means understanding the features or limitations of a particular set of technology along with potential cost impacts. As the most senior technical person, they'd also be responsible for the overall health of the production environment. They may not need to be involved in every single deployment necessarily, but if something did go wrong, they would need to be fully aware of the design and be capable of correcting it as needed. More so than any other member on the team, I'd say, the lead technical person needs to be more mindful of security. And this includes everything from role management to possible networking, just to make sure that the architecture is locked down and meeting all security requirements. Some of this will probably overlap with other IT teams at the company who focus solely on security, but the lead engineer would probably be that point of contact on behalf of the internal data team. Now, when talking about the team dynamics, this person is going to be obviously the one giving final input regarding overall architecture and tooling decisions. They should be able to compare and contrast the different technical options and help the company land on a decision. They also need to be able to guide the team and prioritize the high level work. And this doesn't necessarily mean deciding, you know, week to week what development work is assigned to people, but more so on a high level, being able to prioritize, you know, projects and be able to speak how different projects are impacting others across the organization. Now, last but certainly not least, as the highest technical resource, this person will be looked upon as truly a leader within the data team. So they would be expected to guide both senior and junior engineers and also act as a team representative to company leadership. Each of these three positions fall on a spectrum, I think, and can vary really significantly depending on your company. Uh, but hopefully this overview will help you better understand the different roles and responsibilities in this career of data engineering and perhaps areas for you to focus on if you want to take that next step. For more details on what a common architecture might look like, again, check out that link below to my free starter guide for the modern data stack. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.